Good morning. So let's read an EEG and we'll interpret that EEG, but we will go step by step what are the things that you look at. So you're looking at an EEG. I mean, it looks like a mess. There is a lot of overlap in the channels that you see over here. Uh, just for newcomers, all channels that end with an odd number are recording from the left side of the brain. Channels that end with an even number are recording from the right side of the brain. The red channel is actually the ECG recording. Channels that end with the letter Z are recording from the midline. These green lines here are separated by one second. It's important that you keep an eye on these controls and these parameters as well. So look at the sensitivity here. So in most adult patients, we look at seven microvolts per millimeter. If there is a lot of overlap in the channel, we can change the sensitivity. So let's try doing that. From seven, we'll go down to 10, and we see less overlap in the channels. If we go to 15, you see even much less overlap between the channels. These things here, these are the eye blink artifacts. We do not see a posterior dominant alpha rhythm on the CEG. Let's move on to the next page. We can see a lot of muscle artifacts. So this is this fast activity. This is the muscle artifact. We are seeing some slowing, a lot of slowing in the background. There, is, there are some sharp components. If I go from 15 back to 7 microvolts per millimeter, those sharp components in the slowing becomes much more prominent. Let's just, for the sake of uh, reviewing the CG, let's go back to 15 microvolts per millimeter. Uh, the ECG, you should monitor the ECG rate. Here, the ECG rate is 90 beats per minute. So you want to keep an eye at whether the ECG is regular and what is the rate at that time. So there is a lot of, this is a 24-year-old patient with cognitive delay and intellectual disability. There's a lot of slowing in the background. We see delta and theta frequencies. So delta frequencies are frequencies that are less than four cycles per second. Theta is between four to eight, should be less than eight. And But we do not see an occipital normally in an adult patient in quite restfulness. You can see an occipital dominant alpha rhythm, which is eight to 13 hertz, which we do not see here. We are seeing a mixture of delta and theta with some superimposed beta activity. So let's move on to the CEG. This is basically an eye closure artifact here. And I'm just pulling it out. You're, uh, you're looking at a very high amplitude delta and theta activity. You're looking at some sharp discharges that are mixed with the background. The heart rate is still 90 beats per minute. Here, delta is sort of a little bit more prominent than the theta activity. And this is again an eye closure artifact. So as we move on, you can see some evolution in the frequencies. There is sort of like a bit higher amplitude slowing despite keeping it 15 microvolts per millimeter. You can still see a lot of delta and theta activity. For Clarity's sake, you can try different uh, sensitivities. So go back to seven and you can see, you can appreciate how much slowing that is there. And if you go back to 30 microvolts per millimeter, you can see there is less overlap, but you can still appreciate the slowing. Keep in mind that every millimeter represents 30 microvolts. So this is a pretty high amplitude EEG. Going back to 15 microvolts here, we keep moving, we see a burst of sharp discharges here, sharp and slow discharges right here. You, when you see that kind of a stuff, just so that you're clear that this is not a low amplitude sharp waves, go back to seven microvolts for a second and see what that looks like. And then go to 10 microvolts per second, go to uh, back to 15, try on 20, you can try on 30, microvolts per millimeter and you can see the difference. And now we start seeing something really interesting. I would ask you to just pause the video and see if you can identify the interesting stuff that I'm talking about. Well, if you've already identified it, good for you. Keep an eye on P301 and T501. We are starting to see a fast activity 
a rhythmic activity in, in these regions in the left posterior quadrant. And this is at 20 microvolts per millimeter. If I increase the gain, if I go to seven, it becomes more prominent. And then you see an evolution in frequencies and amplitude in those two channels. And this is still looking at 20 microvolts per millimeter. And then it further evolves and you see high amplitude spikes and sharp waves in that distribution. And it starts slowing down and it involves more channels at this time. So you're seeing a lot of rhythmic activity. We are looking at 20 microvolts, now 30 microvolts, even at 30 microvolts it is visible. And it's starting to disappear, but you still see these sharp waves right there. And you still see the rhythmic delta activity. And it is gone now. So this was an electrographic seizure that came out of the left occipital head region. And basically, the seizure spread to the frontal eye fields, and patient had a head deviation to the right side. So just if you look at this at 50 microvolts per millimeter, it just looks like an asymmetric alpha rhythm. But if you go to the 7 microvolts per millimeter, that's when you realize that this is a seizure. Even at 10 microvolts per millimeter, 15 microvolts per millimeter, 20 microvolts per millimeter, it is quite prominent, quite impressive. So I think the message that you need to take away from this uh, tutorial today is try playing with the different controls, different parameters, change the gain. Normally in adult patients, we are looking at seven microvolts per millimeter. Try 10, try 20, try 30. And you can also try some other stuff. You can change the time base. So from 30, you can try 60 millimeters and this will get spread out. So normally when somebody is having a seizure, it's not a bad idea to try spreading out the EG and you will have a better appreciation of that. And if I go back to the seizure and increase the gain here, I mean the seizure, it, this gives another picture of the seizure at 60 uh, millimeters per second. Normally we use 30 millimeters per second. So let me go back to that. And I hope you've learned something from this tutorial. Hope to see you at the next tutorial. Thank you so much.